Eureka 7 bros, rise up. I want to talk about Eureka 7 High Evolution 3. So the trailer just got announced and there's a lot to talk about. I want to dissect the trailer, do all that what's up YouTuber stuff. But first, I want to recap High Evolution 1 and High Evolution 2 because it takes a massive dump on the Eureka 7 mythos. I don't know why they did that. It seems like every single spin-off property within the Eureka 7 universe does everything in its power to shit on the original series. I don't know why this ends up that way. The manga shits on the original series. The continuation anime shits on the original series. The light novel shits on the original series. Why do they keep doing this? Why do they keep getting these hack writers to pick up this IP when it's clear that they don't even want to write for it? But Roy, what, what do you mean they don't want to write for it? Okay, at the beginning of Eureka 7 Owl, the continuation of Eureka 7, it takes place directly after Eureka 7. Eureka 7 Owl, it features their son. And what do they do? So they have this robot in Eureka 7 called the Nirvash. And the gimmick here is they have two pilot seats. So the idea is Eureka needs to find someone she loves so that they can pilot the mech together. The theme of the show is, you know, coming together, cooperation, coexisting with the aliens, blah, 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 all that good, you know, anime stuff. But what do they do in Eureka 7 Owl? In the first fucking episode, they rip out the dual cockpit system. And then one of the characters says, what the fuck? Why is there a dual cockpit system? This makes absolutely no sense. Let's put in a solo cockpit system. And I'm just thinking, metaphorically speaking, the dual cockpit system is the original Eureka 7, and you are metaphorically ripping out the point, the virtues of the original series, and then stuffing in your own when literally no one asked. All you had to do to make a competent sequel was talk about something in the past, you know, that's fine, or maybe do a JoJo's type thing where you have the themes, you know, the stands, the themes, everything is kind of the same, but the story, the main characters, it's different. They could have kept it as a love story, a mech love story. We, ha we, we have barely any mech stories as it is. Maybe we could get another mech love story with kind of the whole surfing aesthetic, but no. They gave us the most generic teenage mecha get in the robot Shinji plotline you could ever imagine. And to make things even worse, Eureka 7 Owl was plagued with production issues. I mean, if you want to make your generic uh, adaptation or continuation of a beloved series, you know, at least go with it. Apparently, the director just left, like, after the first three episodes, and they had to scramble to just fix what they could and just assemble a story. So it was just super trash. But enough about Eureka 7 Owl. No one's here for that. Let's talk about High Evolution 1. So when High Evolution 1 first came out, I was under the impression that it was just a recap movie like a lot of anime series especially popular mech anime series they get their own kind of recap movie taking bits from the anime mostly bits from the anime and just jigsaw puzzling together the anime to form a movie with maybe one or two scenes that are movie exclusive but no Eureka 7 high evolution does reuse a lot and I mean a lot of animation from the original series but it is not a recap it is its own new canonical universe. So at the beginning of High Evolution, we get some of the best animation in the industry, bar none. It's so good. It's essentially setting up the plot to lead up to the original Eureka 7 series. So it's how Renton's dad kind of saved the world. And we have this huge scale war between the humans on one side and the aliens on the other. And it's actually really, really well animated. And the creativity, the creativity that goes into those mech fights is, it's amazing it's so freaking good it's something i could show someone who doesn't like anime if they just want to watch like a short 30 minute no not even 30 minutes i think it's 15 minutes if they want to watch a short 15 minute sci-fi just gulp it down see the cool mech fights and that's it i would show them this clip it's absolutely fantastic and you should watch the first part of high evolution for sure if you're any kind of a mecha fan i would recommend you watch it even if you hate eureka 7 or something it's that good but going from there going from that super high it goes super downhill so fast so i was watching this right and i was like holy crap this is this is amazing and then suddenly the aspect ratio goes from 16 by 9 and then scrunches itself down to 4 by 3 and i'm like oh no oh no 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 okay you know what you know what fine fine you want to retell the series go ahead retell the series I'll, I'll sit through it it's not that long but wait a second, this isn't the beginning of the series. This is like at the midpoint. Why are you starting here? Everyone's going to be so confused. 
So after that amazing intro, it literally jumps to regular 4x3. They reuse animation from the regular series, but they don't start at the beginning. They start the part where Renton meets his new mom and dad, air quotes, and they kind of raise him, and it's this heartfelt moment. I've watched the original series, so I don't know. Like, I wasn't confused because I have watched the original series. If you have not watched the original series, you're going to be so freaking lost here. And then they do this thing. They do this thing where they edit around, like they call it play back and play forward, where they show scenes in non-chronological order as if the show wasn't confusing enough. So the movie takes this one scene from the original Eureka 7 series, stretches it out to be a movie, plays it in non-chronological order, and I'm ready to just, you know, punch a hole through my monitor. I'm so mad at this point. And they end it. They have the audacity to end the movie with Renton going back to Eureka, which is fine, but they end it there. There's no climax. We're, we're at the rising action. We're like getting to the climax. He hasn't gone back to her. He hasn't kissed her. Noth nothing has happened. It's just been our main character realizing he loves her. You know, that's fine in an anime. But when you're having a movie and you have literally zero payoff, like I feel super ripped off. So High Evolution 2 better be the conclusion to this whole Renton going back. You, you know, the love story better finish off. I mean, you're reusing animation here. So this better be the bee's knees. And at the end, okay, get this, at the end of High Evolution 1, they show the trailer for High Evolution 2. And get this, none of the stuff you're seeing right now ever happens in High Evolution 2. That's right, none of the animation that they showed that made you think it was just a continuation of the regular series actually happens in High Evolution 2. High Evolution 2 just completely splits off and starts its own storyline, its own canon universe. Okay, that was a lot to take in, so let's recap the recap. So High Evolution comes out, it's just a snippet of the original Eureka 7 series. Doesn't start from the beginning, starts in the middle, and then it ends before the climax. So you just feel super blue balled at this point, and you're like, okay, whatever. Because they showed you animation of the, you know, the ending of the series, and you're like, I can't wait to see the ending of Eureka 7 in high definition. This is going to be epic. You see that cute anemone? God damn it. Anemone. Anemone. You see that cute anemone butt? That does not happen in High Evolution 2. So not only did the plot bros lose, fellow plot bros, but the fan service bros also lose. But before we talk about High Evolution 2, I want to talk a little bit about the marketing that went into High Evolution 1. So High Evolution 1 was kind of pushed as the Ranton story. So if you see Renton, he, you know, he's just plastered all over the place. He is the main character of High Evolution 1. It just focuses on his character alone. And the next movie, they're focusing on Anemone. So at this point, you the viewer, someone that's seen the original Eureka 7 series, and you must have seen the original Eureka 7 series, because if you have not seen the original Eureka 7 series, I have no idea why you're watching these movies, or at least the sequel anyway, because you have absolutely no idea what's going on. You're like, okay, this makes sense, because in the story, canonically, the next, you know, kind of mini plot line is the Anemone stuff. So I can't wait to see our plot line. So imagine my amazement, my dumbfoundedness, when the beginning of High Evolution 2 doesn't pick off at the end of High Evolution 1, so all the setup in High Evolution 1 is just thrown out the window, but it starts off with Fuka Anemone, which is Anemone in the original Eureka 7 universe, with her pink hair and everything, but in our world, like in Tokyo, she has an iPhone, she has AirPods, all that whole tragic backstory stuff, you know, just throw that out the window, because she has a new tragic backstory. Okay, get this. So, Eureka 7, it's called Eureka 7 because seven Eurekas showed up in our world and they started killing people. That's right, random Nirvashas, seven of them, have appeared in our world and they just started destroying stuff, just killing people indiscriminately. And our modern technology, you know, like the US military, can't even land a scratch on superior Nihon mecha suits. So what do they do? They employ this super smart computer science guy who just so happens to be Anemone's dad, and he devises a way to kind of dive into Eureka's mind, or at least one of the mechs that's just blowing up the world, and defeat her mentally in kind of like a video game simulation thing. 
and of course he dies but before he dies Anemone being the you know little girl that she is she tells her dad to die essentially and she feels nothing but regret when her dad you know actually dies so fast forward to the future where the movie takes place Anemone joins the secret task force somehow and is decided to dive into the machine to fight the Eureka robots and she does so and she ends up in her mech from the original series not sure how that's explained that's not explained at all and then she defeats one of the Eurekas and then the world is saved she needs to defeat seven more oh and before I forget what happened to Dominic you know Dominic was her love interest like how does he finish it all this turns out her dad made a machine learning AI like Siri called Dominic and that's yeah, that's who Dominic is. Dominic is now a machine learning AI helper concierge who only exists in kind of a regular boy humanish form inside the simulation. So every time she dives inside the simulation, you can see that she has like some blush. She has a crush on Dominic. And if you're thinking this is super stupid, well then I'm with you at this point. I'm just like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Why did they do this to the lore of Eureka 7? How could they butcher it so hard? But I'm like, you know what, whatever, okay? I'm a huge Eureka 7 fan. The, at least the soundtrack is okay, albeit this movie is a little slow. But that's when they hit you. That's when they hit you hard. You know, I tanked through the Eureka 7 Astral Ocean Season 2 bullcrap, and I also tanked through the Eureka 7 manga, but I was not prepared with what they were about to hit me with. So get this. Renton is dead. Renton is fucking dead. You know when he rescued Eureka and she started looking like a cancer patient? Like all the stuff that happened in High Evolution? None of that actually happened. You know when they were doing the play and fast forward and the non-chronological order stuff? I thought they were just being lazy and just chopping together bits of the anime. No. As it turns out, when Eureka woke up, she realized she had the powers of a god. Not explained by the way. She realized she had the powers of a god and has been dreaming and creating her own kind of pocket dimensions where Renton could still be alive. That's right, Eureka 7, the mainline series, the lovely ending, is just a fever dream. The Eureka 7 Owl, also a fever dream. The Eureka 7 Manga, also a fever dream. You know, I think this is kind of a smart way to explain why the anime, the subsequently the sequel anime, and then the manga and the light novel are so freaking different. It's not because they were written by different people. It's clearly because Eureka was having fever dreams and trying to imagine worlds where Renton was still alive. Why all these worlds had to have so much suffering in them, I have no idea. Like, get this. If this movie is to believe to be the god canon, then Eureka has been dreaming nothing but tragedies because the manga, which is now supposed to be one of Eureka's dreams, ends with Eureka kind of dying and then Renton being forced to live alone. In the Eureka light novel, what happens is their daughter gets killed and that really sucks. So Eureka talks about how she's been dreaming and dreaming and dreaming, trying to create the perfect world, but every time in her dreams, it always sucks. So as you can imagine, the final fight ends with talk no jutsu as Eureka and Anemone talk to each other and Anemone is like, I had a shit life too, you know, and I learned to deal with it. So you should learn to deal with it too. And Eureka's like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to learn to deal with it. Eureka and Anemone then leave the dream world. They also leave the dream world with Nirvash. So the Nirvash mech is in our world, like in modern day Japan, Nirvash is there. Also, remember how I said Dominic was an AI who only had a physical form inside this dream pocket dimension thing? He manages to leave the dream pocket dimension with them, so he gets to keep his human male form. Anyways, at this point, I really wanted to die because would it have been so hard for them to just give us the happy ending we all wanted to just make the love story and leave it be and if they want to make a sequel just keep the love story stuff keep the mech stuff and keep the general aesthetic i'm talking about the music and the look of the show and it'd be fine i'd pay good money to go watch it but what they decide to do at the end is kind of just spit on what they just taught eureka so at the end you know how anemone says eureka you know you got to get over the fact that you killed renton just get over it okay and then she gets over it but what they do is Renton is somehow alive in an alternate pocket dimension and he sends a message to Eureka saying I'm gonna come get you wait for me and I'm just thinking what was the point of the movie we just watched what, what, what was the point I don't get it if the point was to send this message about you know 
getting over loss is more important than just living in a delusion. That's fine. But you can't just say get over your loss only to have no repercussions. Like the reason why she didn't want to get over her loss is because she didn't want to live in a world without Renton. And now that she's willing to live in a world without Renton, you're rewarding her by giving her back Renton. That, that defeats the purpose of your message. And did Studio Bones really need to drag the original series through the mud? Just leave it be. Why is it in the canon now that the original series is non-canon? It was just a fever dream. Why? It was so good. And now you're saying it was all a lie? That it was all a dream? You you can't do that. You you can't just, just take a massive dump on fans like that. Ma fans like me are the only guys keeping you afloat. We're the only people buying this stuff. And if you do this, we're not going to buy it. All right, so before we end it, let's look at this from the perspective of a cost-benefit analysis, okay? Let's look at this objectively. What did we get from these two garbage movies? We got Eureka 7 Ao is no longer canon. That's a win. Eureka 7 Manga is no longer canon. That's also a win. Eureka 7 Light Novel, no longer canon. That is another win, baby. But what did we lose? We lost the original series. Which one of you guys used a monkey's paw because there's no way there's no way anyways this video is long enough as it is i guess i'll actually talk about high evolution 3 in a part two so uh, look forward to that one world, one future.